I was you, I would be avoiding doing this. Do not tuck your wide-legged pants or even boot-cut pants into knee-high boots. I mean, do you think this looks good? I personally would not wear boots like this. Make sure when you wear knee-high boots is that you always wear them with skinny trousers. That's the only time where I really suggest you wear skinny trousers. And we're actually gonna speak about that in point number two. Something that looks quite dated is to wear skinny trousers. You know, I've said many times on this channel how I don't think that the skinny trouser actually is suitable for most body shapes. Yes, some very skinny-legged women can look fine in skinny trousers, but for the the rest of us mortals? The answer is no bueno. And the reason for that is simple, ladies. When it's too fitted around your limbs, your limbs are gonna look wider. They're gonna look bigger. As you know, there's nothing wrong with wider legs, but everyone can agree that we do not want to wear clothes that really feel like it's widening us and making us look bigger. This lady here, if you think about it, her outfit is actually quite nice, but you can see that the skinny trouser is literally what's killing the whole outfit. If she just had worn a bit of nicer pants, maybe a bit of wider leg pants. This outfit would have looked so much more elevated. Here I'm showing you some nice pictures of just wider leg trousers and you can see how much more instantly elevated these looks look like. And I'm not saying you all have to now wear really oversized pants or baggy trousers. Avoid the really fitted, fitted trouser unless you're wearing it with a boot. Okay, you know which fall garment that I really can't stand? And I might have recommended it at some point in the past. If you just tuck it in a little bit, instantly it becomes more elevated. More elevated. More elevated. I officially have to take back my recommendation. But ladies, I cannot do the oversized cardigan at all. And you know that I'm all about loving v-neck, but when it comes to cardigans, especially the oversized one, uh, the v-neck cardigans is... Mm. I just think that this is probably one of the most frumpiest garments you can wear, and it's not flattering on anyone. The only time I would say, sure, go for it, wear it, is when you just wear it casually at home, when you're just sitting on your couch. I don't know, somehow it just makes me feel like the person who is wearing this, they have somehow given up on life. All I'm saying, ladies, is that I don't think you should be buying this garment for this fall season. Okay, I'm gonna give you my opinion now, and I'm sure there are gonna be many of you who will disagree in the comments below, but hear me out. Matchy matchy is not always a good idea, okay? So somebody who has done this quite a lot is actually Melania Trump. I do like her style, but here I think that, wow, okay, we're going a little bit overboard. I mean, you can see here with the purple coat and the aubergine matchy matchiness, maybe a little bit too much, and same goes for kind of the yellow coat outfit with all the brown matchy matchy details. I think that's actually quite a good example when, okay, I think we're taking it a little bit too far, because the point of matching is that, of course, you should be matching your items. There's nothing wrong with matching your, let's say, uh, shoe with your bag, but it can be done in a way where it's not so incredibly obvious. The problem is when you take these bold color combinations and you literally match them to the T with everything that's going on in the outfit, that's when it becomes a bit too much. I would say if you are having more neutrals in your outfit and you're doing kind of matchy-matchy with your neutrals, I have actually a good example picture of that. I have Amal Clooney here as a great example. You can see her outfit is really nice, very neutral. Then she has this really strong orange color bag, but she's not wearing strong orange as her shoes. As a result, the shoes are matching the handbag, but it's not going all in. It's all about taking the color combinations into account. If they're too bold, then maybe you should hold off a little bit, but if they're more subtle, then that can work. Okay, something that I really want to talk to you about is this trend of oversized clothes. I don't say that you shouldn't be wearing oversized clothes. In fact, I'm going to show you now some pictures of beautiful, classy outfits that were oversized, but it works so incredibly well. Oversized clothing are, first of all, very trendy right now. A little bit of oversized is nice, so go all in for it. But the really oversized is not going to look amazing on regular women or bigger women. I guess my problem with this oversized trend is that that everybody who wears this is always like size zero or really skinny or model type of body. Let's take this photo of Selena Gomez as an example. 
She's wearing a really simple outfit, this oversized sweater. She looks fine in it, nothing wrong. But put the same outfit on a woman, let's say a few sizes bigger than Selena. An oversized sweater like that would make most likely that woman look a bit more frumpy. And we're not talking about this in a way that it's something wrong with the size. No, the point is there's nothing wrong with the size. There's something wrong with these trends. Because I am a certified image consultant, in our work, we look at shapes and silhouettes and balancing things up and I just think that these trends today are really tailored for very skinny women or models what about the rest what is gonna be really flattering on them and that's something I have found that actually an elegant and feminine style seems to be something that just works on most bodies all I'm saying is that I really want you to be careful and always think about does this suit your body type your body proportion your body scale and if you want to learn more about this, I have a program for you, The Elegant Stylist, where you really get to learn how to dress for your unique body, but also for your unique self. I highly, highly recommend all of you ladies to invest in your style education because once you understand these things, you will never have to end up looking like this. <laughs> Go to elegantstylist.me to find out more information on how you can become my fashion student. Another thing that you would actually learn if you would become my student one day, clothing shapes, necklines, etc., and how they translate to our bodies. One thing, though, that is incredibly universal, and we see it both in spring and summer, but we also see it in fall and winter, dresses that have drop waist. Do you know how it's gonna make your torso look like? It's gonna look like you have really short legs and like this long torso. You can see here in this picture with this lady wearing this really oversized sweater. Again, you know, in some form it can work, but you can see here, this is a terrible way of wearing it. Your skirt line is so short, your upper body looks so long, and you don't want to do these kind of styling mistakes. And unfortunately, this is so easily done and it happens when women are not familiar with, well, style education, but also with how clothing lines and body shapes and body proportions work in harmony. Let's just go back to the oversized conversation because there's something else that is oversized that always makes such a big entrance whenever we talk about fall and winter fashion. Oversized sweater mini dress. Just Google on Pinterest like fall inspo or fall style and you're gonna see this dress come up a lot. Regular women with regular bodies might not feel really comfortable wearing something like this. It's kind of hard to pull something like this off. Yet this kind of style gets really recommended a lot during the season. I just want you to be careful about it and think about, does that work for you? I mean, a variation of this would be to just add a bit more length to the sweater, more kind of thick knit type of sweater dresses. You can belt them up, you can wear boots underneath and so on. So yeah, for sure, wear the knitted sweater dress, but just think about the length. You don't necessarily have to go mini just because Pinterest is recommending that to you. Another picture that always comes up to me on Pinterest is this image of Rosie. By the way, I love Rosie. I think she's so beautiful. She has amazing style, but of course anyone can make style mistakes. Even though I sit here and I have a YouTube channel, I also do style mistakes from time to time. It's normal, but just so that we use Rosie as a case study today. Look at these boots. This gives an appearance of a shorter look to Rosie. And we know Rosie is not short. However, these boots are shortening her because these boots are quite wide. I would not recommend you to wear a skirt or dress with wide boots like this. This is the kind of boot that Rosie should have been wearing. Something really fitted around the ankle that would have looked so much more flattering in that combination. Because yes, you can wear boots with skirts. The secret is all about how fitted they are around your ankle. Next in line, boxy jackets. And let me tell you, I've made this mistake myself. Boxy jackets are literally a hit and miss. If you have more of a straight body shape, then yes, they can absolutely work. There are some boxy jackets that just don't work at all because they just look overly boxy, not flattering. And it's a little bit hard to say, okay, what is it exactly that makes these boxy jackets look better? Sometimes it's about the material. Sometimes it's about the shape, about the construction, thickness as well of the material and how it lays on your body, how it works with your body shape and so on. Be mindful with boxy jackets. 
sides. I know now is the season for it, especially if you love elegant style. This jacket is gonna be recommended to you a lot. The next one I know is gonna cause discussion below, but hear me out because I wanna share my opinion on this. I think that wearing fur is a very cheap way of looking expensive. I know that in our society, fur is kind of associated with the rich, with glamour, with elevation of some sort of looking really expensive. But I find it cheap to use fur for that reason, because in a way you're basically supporting like severe animal cruelty just to kind of raise your own ego or your own value through clothes. And I think there's also a reason to why more and more fashion houses are now stepping away from fur, rejecting it altogether from their collections. It's because this is the worst type of animal cruelty out there. All I'm saying, ladies, is that there are so many ways that you can dress and look very expensive without having to use animal fur. But I'm gonna share what those ways are in my next video. So hop on over to that video because I will be seeing you over there.